Okay, so what I'm showing you on the screen is that uh, can, can you all see on the left hand side? That's a Ruby file, right? What I'm doing is that I'm just going to a terminal, okay? I go to a terminal and and then I'm just gonna use the latest Ruby version, okay? And I'm going to, well, actually, let's try that again. I split the screen, so that's Ruby 2.3.1. Uh, let's, I create a file, sandbox. You can name it anything you want, but let's say now with Ruby, right, you can do that. And how do you run this file? Guys, how do you run it? No, how do you run the Ruby file on the left hand side? Uh, so you actually run it by calling sandbox. Yeah? Uh, Ruby sandbox.rb and then hello world. What's a faster way to explain Ruby to you right now? If I write something like this and you know, uh, and you're like, okay, this is boring. How's, what's the faster way? So what happened? What happened here? If I say greeting.new.hi and then I go over here and I see hi. This is one of the best ways to learn Ruby, right? No. Yes. Okay, so there's also an interactive Ruby, right? So if you're familiar with a lot of languages back in, Ruby actually was invented in like 1994, and then Java was invented in 1995. So Ruby is actually older by a year. But uh, let's see, um, interact Ruby is slow, but everything else is great. So you see interactive Ruby, you can have, do cool things, right? You can assign a variable to a number, right? You can also assign it to whatever is before that. So a equals that, so that's a. Now dynamic uh, typing, so now it guess what a is, right? What is a? It's a fixed number, so it's an integer, but it's also strong type, so you cannot do this because you cannot convert a string into a num. So let's let's do a little bit more. Uh, this console seems like a cool thing. You can open a class, maybe I say a car class, and then end it. Right? This is an empty class. What is the class of car? So, and then you have. So basically, everything's an object. Okay? And a class is an object. Now, now you have notice you have this car thing. So Ruby allow you to open this car class and add more stuff to it. So let's see, you can say, you know, um, right, uh, start, right? So what happens when you start? Mm. Right, and, and. So that's pretty cool. You have a car, and now you can do car.new dot start. Why do we need dot new? Yeah, what is this method? Yeah, so that's an instance method. So, but you, you, you get the idea, I'm opening the class and I just add more stuff to it. That's why it's so powerful, you can do anything you want. You can define a dynamic name and, but it's not very convenient to, I can't really change stuff here. So I, I show you a different way, don't worry about it. I just use a tool like Notemon, but basically every time my sandbox file changes, Right, I run Ruby sandbox. Okay, so I'm doing this so that maybe we can learn Ruby a little bit faster. So let's go. So you see, hello world, hi. So let's let's have a crash course on Ruby. Right, outside this global space, you have uh, you can have this hello world. What happens? Uh oh. So if I save this file, it runs. Right. But usually, to write good code, you put things in in classes. For a class, you can have uh, a method like hi. Now, this is a method. 
Now you can call. So I I set this to to new. In Ruby, you can call a method by itself. You can also do this, right? Can you do this? What happens if you run that? I think, oh. Uh, wrong number of arguments, right? How can we fix this? So then I put a, an argument to it, right? So can I run this? Then something will be wrong again. So how do I fix this? There's a default parameter, so you can do that, right? So now you can say hello name. So that's a string, and you can insert a variable into the string, right? I mean, in, can you do that in JavaScript? In JavaScript, you'll probably have to do hello plus, right? And in Python and PHP, uh, in later version, you can do that. But in some of the newer languages, they care about people's happiness. So it should be really easy to insert in. There's just a lot of way to insert, you know. Then the danger of Ruby is that there's just too many ways. And then if you're not careful, you make it really hard for people to understand what you're trying to do. Right? So you can also do it that way. Okay. So that's pretty cool because now you see that we have, you can also do it this way. Make sense? So these are normal arguments. You can also uh, do this thing called keyword argument. So normal argument, when you run, read the code, you don't really understand what the role of the, you know, their, uh, this argument is. But now if I say hi name, and I put the same thing here, let's, let's try a dot say hi, and I put an argument here, what happens there? It will say wrong number of arguments, right? This is a keyword arguments, like a hash. So it's expecting a hash. So how do you think this should work? You have to do this, right? It looks like a hash. All right, so I think I have, um, I have note mount somewhere else. So it just, or maybe QuickTime is running and it doesn't like it. Okay, so, so we learned a little bit about methods and string uh, array and strings are the very two powerful uh, construct data type right and I'll share with you so when you look at this one feel free to change it to the version that you use I'll share with you more but it if you uh, in the lecture notes when you go home I'll publish this guide to spend some time when you taking a poop in the restroom when you're waiting for the car, the bus, you know, read that, right? When, you, when you're not coding real stuff. I hope you spend time and understand Ruby really well. And then it uh, allows you to do a lot of cool things. You see that, like, array, you see this tiny thing here? There's a ton of method. And, and then the string is another one. So it's a beast. Actually, let me just show you what I'm trying to write. So, for you guys so basically I prepare something like that it's obvious now and you see everything is an object so you can check right if you just start doing check check for class right then these are the type so you can start you know checking these are float and then some fixed num is a subclass of numeric and all that crazy stuff right float and, and fix integer and fixed num are subclass all right so even nil is part of nil class there's only one but you know argue, uh, one one object in there right true false is in boolean is it i don't know i mean good call so maybe true dot class it's a true class false dot class is a false class that's nuts but in, be careful in ruby uh, these are falsy values, nil, false, right? Sometimes empty in, in the database. Range is extremely powerful, right? In, in newer languages, you do this. In the old languages uh, that don't care about adding new stuff, or they actually add new stuff, no one uses, like C++ and Java. Uh, I don't mean, here's a Java expert there. People, you know, this, 
in a lot of software, right? People don't use the new SDK as much in those languages because it's it's uh, complicated to add on. And but in Ruby, we can take advantage of that. That's a range, and then you can turn that into. So let's say I assign that to A, and then I can do now to A, right? Right. I can actually map maybe each one of them. So this one. What happens? Oh, 2a, that's a range, 2a then is an, a, an array, right? How do I create, um, how do I create, I think there's a method that turn a number into, into the words. But I forgot that one. So let's say I have uh, a, b, c, d, right? So this, you can do a, b, c, d, but with Ruby, over time, this, this might feel crazy, but this is an array of strings, so you can do A, B, C, D, E. Makes sense, right? Because that's, that's, that's uh, C and that's B. How do you put A and 1 together? You just do like some, something like A, zip, C, and then they're just got together, right? But then let's say if you want, no, I want to print out maybe you can map them to say into a string. So you turn them into us the first guy. Uh, so let's say A, that's A, right? And colon, zero, uh, one, and then B2, so let's say two. Can you follow here? So if I map that, what happens? I get A colon one, B colon, right? So, and then you can do all the funky stuff. So if you, you want to join them, you can just say join. And it looks like that, right? Well, let's say if you join them as this, it looks like, it looks like almost like a JSON structure, right? You know, like key value, key, key value. So if I have this value as Z, and what if I actually say I add this, and then I add Z to it, does it look at like a hash? Then you actually, let's say, of course, you know, it's very dangerous, but if you do that, now you get a hash. So this hash, okay, I am calling this Y, okay? So I evaluate this string into this one, and now Y is a hash, and Y has these keys, and Y has these values. So it's fun, right? That's why, you know, so in Python, you can also do that, and, and the guy who invented Python, he got so upset that people did so many things differently, so he say no, right? don't do all of those, and then he start taking out features. So Ruby is like, hey, everyone's happy, let's put more features in it. So we have to be responsible. All right, so at home, you can learn a little bit more. Constant is just fake constant. It's the way you name it, just use capital letters. You can change it, but don't. Ruby will actually complain. Uh, there's a thing called symbol in a lot of languages you don't have. So symbols, who guess, Who can guess why we need symbols in Ruby? These guys are symbol. So you see this, this colon A, colon B. So if I do colon A, that's a value, right? If I check whether colon A is the same as colon A, yeah? So if I do string A, that's also a value. Do you think this is the same? Who say no? Who say yes? Yeah, yes. Otherwise, you will go crazy. You're like, what the heck is this language? But, right? So, but technically, they're not exactly the same. I think there's an, there's a, I forgot what, it's been a while. I forgot how to check whether they're the same, exactly identical or not. Uh, is it this one? Oh yeah, so so that's false. So it's like, what is this equal? Well, look, everything is an object. This guy actually has a thing called object ID. In an earlier Ruby, uh, version of Ruby, it actually called ID. And then Rails come along and Rails say, well, I need to have a user, and user ID is the ID in the database. And Ruby is saying, no, ID is the ID of the object. So Rails has to monkey patch 
open up the object and then say no ID, ID becomes object ID and then when you call ID that's ID of the uh, you know database uh, active records right when you do blog post article dot ID that happened that's what happened and and rails really changed the way and shape the way Ruby is developed they say okay let's listen to these guys let's make it happy um, so now it's changed it's called object ID everything an object right so if you do this they'll say I have this ob I have this variable a I have this variable B their object ID is not the same now what happens there's not the same right so every time you think you're using the same object uh, same string in let's say you know you have like oh one to a million times now this is very hard to write so you can actually in Ruby you can write a million like that right and as if that's already you know let's say you can do one up to a million and again if you don't like using that you can also say 10 to the power 6 and then you say you know um, in here do right uh, there's a the block in here and you do something with a lot of string right it's a really long string and you see that each time you're just using a ton of you know memory so how to prevent that for for the string values that's uh, you know uh, that serve as key of hashes you know hash of keys right like dictionary uh, and remember our why so this a is always the same every time you say colon a so that's that's useful right uh, so I, I wrote up a little bit there, right? Ruby uh, treats these guys as, as the same, so it's very convenient. Uh, this helps save a little time. Hash is very powerful. It you learn a little bit more in Rails, but you can write much shorter code if you love hashes. If you just use for loop and all that, think again, right? Your code will just be uh, much longer. So, and another. Thing that's good about Ruby is the meta programming, or in uh, where you can actually look into yourself and say, "Oh, what object I have? What instant variables I have? Right? Can I define a new one on the fly?" And all that cool stuff. So, read, pick up a Ruby book when you in, in your free time. The best time is when you go to the toilet, and you know if you stuck there for an hour, it's it's worth it. So, uh, but then it's a, it looks like it's crazy thing where let's say one is an object and then you say sometimes you want you're curious right instant methods. Uh oh, how do I? I didn't have it. I don't have it. And what's that? So I have to. Huh? It's an object. Yeah. So one one is. So let's say I try this again, right? Car dot instant methods. Alright, so car is in a class and it has these instant methods. And say car dot new, and then you also have these. What's that? Methods. But a dot methods, right? So what? Yeah, uh, Gwen was able to 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 uh, you know figure out there my mistake earlier I was trying to find an instance method you can only call that on a class when you are an instance then remember a car here you can call instance method and then what's a a is a car right you can call this as methods it may be hard to see but it's an array so you can do whatever you want with it you can inspect it uh, you can say puts on this and it just print that it's easy to find you can even use the grep method on it to find a string, uh, but it's just an array of method. I think what happens if you do this? It's an array minus an array. Empty, because they're exactly the same. That's pretty cool, right? Now, at the same time, let's say I have this class car, and I say hi. There's a method hi in it. So car dot new dot methods. If you think this is too many methods, you can just say, hey, minus all the regular methods, and you only have that. So that's pretty neat. So when you look at, at Rails and you look at the libraries people write, you cannot spend hours looking at all the files they used to define something. But you can always go into the code and, hey, stop there. Uh, let's see what method you have. Right? That's pretty cool. Okay.
I think I hope I hope that I convinced you that Ruby is fun, not just some of the you know lousy uh, you know string operator uh, method here. You use a lot in Rails, so I won't touch that. Now, uh, when you use a language that's widely adopted, you know it's the most important thing is about the ecosystem, right? About the community. Uh, so this is one of these are the places where pretty much if you go there and you find a library to do something that you want, it could be counting the number of impressions, could be tracking the IPs, uh, or blocking you know the same IP accessing my server again. Uh, could be you know changing the database adapter to let's say use Microsoft SQL Server instead of uh, Postgres SQL uh, anything um, managing friendship as uh, you know um, the tool to add comments there are always pros and cons sometimes it's better for you to write that and then you know over time your code works the way you want if you use some library and that library is dependent on another library and then you up upgrade rails and then this stop working. Uh, so it's really, uh, it's up to us based on our own experience. It's always good to use these libraries and learn from them. So during this class, feel free to do whatever. I always encourage you to try to do it yourself to have an idea first. For example, tagging. You use some gems, right, for tagging. You can do it yourself. And that's when you're like, oh, I can split the tags by the comma. And like, oh, if I do that, I cannot have tags with comma inside. So how do I solve this problem? Do I save them to multiple rows in the database or not? And uh, there are always trade-offs. Pros and cons, do it yourself, is, is you know, ultimately what makes you a great program. So deployment is another thing. When Heroku came, people were like, oh, man, I can just run my own server. I don't need this. But then you know, it's so nice and, and everyone loved it because when you do your own server and then things, you run out of space or memory and then you have to turn it down, you buy a new one, and all this tricky thing. Now, unfortunately, now Heroku is so powerful, it can run many platforms and deploy anything you want in there. Uh, it becomes expensive, so it's no longer free all the time. Uh, it shut down sometimes. But for our class, the purpose of our class is still amazing, right? It packages everything for you. All of you submitted using Heroku, right? Okay. And there are a lot of tricks, right? Heroku is amazing. We have a lecture on that as well. Uh, so many add-ons that help you go from your local machine to production app that can scale to millions of users. All right. So Rails philosophy. What happened to my clock? It's my mistake. It didn't ring. So I'll give you like two minutes because I saw someone yawning. So let's let's uh, take a, a quick break. Two minutes break. Go uh, take a. That's your biological break. Bring your phone with you so you can read Ruby stuff. <laughs> okay. How's it so far? Is it too slow? This is too fast. <laughs> oh, wow. Then it's going to be faster. You know that, right? You, you, you know you are faster than this movie. So it's, is it fast? Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 Who thinks it's slow? Raise your hand. No. Uh, you don't want to be beaten up by your friends. <laughs> that was supposed to be extremely slow. It's okay, we have the video. You can go home and, and make it go faster and watch. I'm waiting for your uh, Ruby on Okay, great. But so far, Ruby seems fun, right? Yeah. Extremely simple. You can just write a lot of things. So, so nice. When you need to scrape data from a website, Ruby is like, -da -da -da, like you know. You can download like uh, you know Zing, uh, MP3 from Zing, a list of movies from 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 the movie website one two three film, uh, or a movie database. You just save that to files, and because the code is so simple, you read like English. It's like it's pretty sweet, and then it's easy to test. So you can do test driven development. And so that's why I hope by spending that time, I hope you guys feel like oh my god, I'm gonna read about Ruby. I want to understand all these objects and class. And when you do that, you will become a better Rails programmer. You cannot do Rails very well without knowing Ruby. So. Don't use scaffold. Up to you, yeah. That's a, also a good one. So 
we'll use scaffold in this one, but don't use, yeah, you're right. Don't use scaffold, use generator. <laughs> So yeah, so if you use scaffold, it generates everything for you. Controller, model, routes, view. If you use generate, then it's great. I, I need a model. Rails, generate, model. Yeah? All right. Who here knows what ERB means? So, uh, the reason the movie invent the Simon is that to save the memory. It's a little bit, yeah. It's, it's a lot more efficient when people use... Uh, um, yeah, it's, it's one of the biggest reasons. It's performance when you look up the, the elements. And so it's both memory and features. Because when you write your own programs, it's here like it's nothing, but when you have a program to start, it's huge. Right? By having symbol, uh, you actually simplify the code by a lot in, in a much bigger app. So. But then sometimes people abuse symbol. What happens to symbol? They don't get garbage collected. If you use a string and then, ah, oh, this string is not used anymore. It's garbage collected back. But how it's done is, is, is you know, it's up. you have to dig in and, and, and try to find out, okay, is it released yet? So what happens in the terminal, right? You, if you just do like a string like this, Blah blah blah, and then after this, the nodes are done. It's not assigned to any variable and stuff. But you know, if you do this and you assign to a, well, technically, technically, it's not gone, right? You can actually do a equal underscore. It's skip it one more time. But let's say if you do this, and obviously a is always here until you give a. So when you go do this, hopefully it's smart enough, and and then it actually free up the space taken to do the string. So. Uh, I, I read on the internet. They, they said that I should use like triple equals, like equal equals, 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 or just two. Usually, and just use two. So triple equals for JavaScript. Uh, Ruby, it's a little bit different. So that think triple equal is the tricky thing. So let's say right, this is false, right? Wait, that's true. Triple equals is useful for you when you do case control flow. I haven't explained control flow is when you switch statement. So let's do, you know, uh, because you asked that, so let's say case statement, so let's say case A, you can say case one when fixed num, when nil, so it's not using a equals if, if you convert that into an if statement, right? It's not using if a equals one, else if a equals fixed num, else if a equals this. It's actually doing if this one triple equals this, else if this one triple equals this, else if this one triple equals that. That's, that's a bit too much. You need to spend a lot more time in the 